Apple's got new Macs. Well, it's got familiar Macs, but with a new chip. Today, the company announced updated versions of the iMac and 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros with the new M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max chips. All of these are available to order starting today, and most will be shipping next week, with the M3 Max models coming later in November. The star of the show here is the new M3 lineup, which has what Apple calls the biggest leap forward in graphics architecture for Apple Silicon. It's based on the same technology as the A17 Pro in the iPhone 15 Pro, so it's built on 3 nanometers, as hardware accelerated ray tracing and mesh shading for gaming, and it uses a new thing called dynamic caching, a hardware feature that's able to make better use of a GPU's resources. And the cool thing is, devs won't have to do a single thing to take advantage of it. I was able to get an early look at the new Macs with the M3 lineup before today's announcement. And it seems like Apple is saying that it now has the GPU performance to really be competitive with gaming on the Mac, much more so than with prior generations. But we'll have to see if the games actually come, because the Mac has really not been the destination for top gaming titles in the past. The base M3 starts with an 8-core CPU and has up to a 10-core GPU. Apple claims that's 50% faster than the M1 chip, and you can get up to 24 gigs of RAM with it. But it still supports just one extra display out at a time, just like the M1 and M2 before it. The M3 Pro has a 12-core CPU and up to 18 cores on the GPU, and you can get up to 36 gigs of RAM with it. And then the big boy M3 Max chip has a 16-core CPU and up to 40 cores on the GPU. That could be paired with up to 128 gigs of RAM, but you really better be ready to open your wallet really wide to get that. Apple claims that the performance cores are up to 30% faster than the ones in the M1, and the efficiency cores are 50% faster. That should translate to things like up to 2.5 times faster rendering times. But if you already have an M2 generation Mac, you're going to see a much smaller bump in performance. There's a reason Apple is comparing the M3 to the two generation old M1 here. So what can you get the new M3 chips in? Well first, Apple is finally updating the 24 inch iMac and replacing the M1 processor in it with the M3. Everything else about it is the same though, including the design, the display, port selection, and colors. It starts at the same $12.99 price, and its color matched accessories are the same too. There's no USB-C upgrade for the Magic Keyboard, Magic Mouse, or Magic Trackpad, which is kind of a bummer. Apple says it will be two times faster than the M1 model, but the real jump comes if you're finally upgrading that old Intel iMac, where the M3 is 2.5 times faster than even the fastest 27-inch iMac, and up to four times faster than the best 21.5-inch Intel iMac. But sadly, for those hoping for a bigger screen, it's not happening this time. For the MacBook Pros, things are a little more interesting. The 14-inch model is now available with a standard M3 chip, and it starts at $1599, $400 less than the starting price it had before. But that model only comes with 8 gigs of RAM, which feels like a crime at this price, and specking it up to 16 or 24 gigs is going to ramp your price right back up. But this also means that the 13-inch MacBook Pro with a touch bar is finally dead and gone. The MacBook Pro line now starts at $1,600 with the 14-inch MacBook Pro, which feels like something Apple should have done ages ago. The M3 Pro and M3 Max can be equipped in either the 14 or 16-inch models, and pricing there is very similar to the prior generation, starting at $19.99 for the 14 and $24.99 for the 16. If you get the better chips, you also have the option of a new color called, wait for it, drum roll, Space Black. It's a darker color than the old space gray, and Apple says it developed a new anodization process that, quote, greatly reduces the appearance of fingerprints, presumably compared to the midnight color that the MacBook Air comes in. I got like 30 seconds to touch the new space black model, and yeah, I guess there are fewer fingerprints on it, but we'll really have to see how it holds up in the real world. And if you get the base M3 14-inch MacBook Pro, you don't have the option for the space black color at all, just the boring old silver and space gray as before. Womp womp. Everything else about the MacBook Pro's design is the same as before, but Apple did increase the brightness of the screen in SDR mode to 600 nits, a 20% bump over the previous one. So there you have it. That's the new M3 chip family and the new Macs that you can get them in. We'll have more testing and reviews of all the new stuff in the near future, so keep it locked on The Verge for more.